for uh, some of you on this call, uh, or potentially lots of you on this call, have been to, to Lagos. And Lagos suffers from absolutely chronic traffic. Uh, people's commute taking hours between the mainland and Victoria Island. And in response to this, we, we, we piloted a product called Uber Boat. And if you've also, if you've been to Lagos, you'll know there's waterways around, around Victoria Island. And we use these waterways as a, as, as a way on a boat to cruise past the traffic and essentially launched the first, um, uh, the, the first on-demand water-led transportation option in, 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 in Africa, which we're really proud of. The other one, I suppose, is, is really being local to, to, to markets that we operate in. And East Africa is, is a market that I, I, I really like. And we started there with, with our, our traditional UberX um, option. We then transitioned to a more lower cost, um, sort of smaller hatch, hatch option. I think there's, could we put somebody on mute? Thanks. Um, a hatch um, option uh, called Uber Chup Chup. But what I'm really proud of is, is, is how, we've, how we've tapped into, into, into motorbikes and tuk-tuks. Our motorbike product is called Uber Boda. Uh, in East Africa, Boda Bodas are, are commonplace. So you can now request a motorbike um, through, the, through the Uber app in, in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. And then we've got a tuk-tuk product, Uber Poa, and Poa is cool in Swahili, and that's available in Kenya and, and Tanzania. And the idea there is to provide effective transport to, with transportation methods that are commonplace to, to the people that live there and that can really directly adapt to the lifestyles of people that live in these, in these markets. Um, so on that, that I suppose is, is already existing. If we go a little bit more, more blue sky, and this is not necessarily a reality in, in sub-Saharan Africa yet, but we, we will get there. Um, we, we've been looking at self-driving technology. We've been piloting that in, in, in the US. Um, urban air transport with uh, Uber Air, picture flying cars, that, it is, that is a reality and we are really working, working towards that. So all these innovations are coming and I'm um, really excited to, to, to roll them out. I think what's always been important to us is to make sure that we can partner with our cities. So we're an American company that comes into a lot of potentially developing markets in, 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 in Africa. And we want to make sure that we can prove that we committed to cities. And it's, it's, it's more than just getting citizens from A to B. It's, 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 it's being a true contributor to the city. So as a, as a company that has a lot of data, we, we uncovered really unique insights in how and why people move in the city. And we've been able to harness this data and provide insights to help cities achieve their strategic goals and improve road safety. And, 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 and with that, we actually built a platform called Uber, Uber Movement. Now Uber Movement is a publicly available, a publicly available platform that is, is not, it's not in all cities, but a number of cities in, in Africa, you can see Nairobi on the screen. And this tool is a, it's essentially a data sharing tool. It's aggregated data, it shares traffic and mobility insights. And, and these insights are actually very useful for urban planners, city leaders, third parties, and, and the public to understand the transportation needs of their cities. Um, they use this when they evaluate where they need to invest in transport. Do you build roads on this side of town? Do you need to widen this road? And we use this data and share this data freely with, um, with the public. I think the, <coughs> the next thing that, that I can talk to is, 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 is also in East Africa. And we, we teamed up with, with a number of partners. Um, we've got uh, Zindi, Flair, and the World Bank, and, and we host, hosted a machine learning hackathon. And we, we tapped into data scientists and innovators um, to, and asked them to use our data that comes out of the movement and challenge them to develop solutions for, for, for something that we eventually developed was an, uh, was an ambulance deployment strategy which will help um, sort of post-crash response. And this was something that came out of, came out of a hackathon that we supported using, using, using our data. If we come a little bit closer to, closer to home, COVID is obviously something that's, that's very close to every single person in the world. And the moment the pandemic hit and the lockdown started to fall, it obviously happened really quickly. We, we realized we had to go back to basics. 
our, our, our cities went, came to a complete standstill. Our drivers stopped working and stopped driving and it became very difficult for, for, for us to move around. So 2020 was a really big year for us. It was a transition and we launched a campaign called Move What Matters. And Move What Matters is all about um, new product offerings in, in the delivery space or a unique space that we haven't been in before. In delivery, we, we've got a, um, a C2C or customer to customer um, product called Uber Connect. So if you open your if you open your app today in some cities in in South Africa, in Sub-Saharan Africa, in Accra, for example, in um, in Nairobi, in Johannesburg, Cape Town, you can actually request a uh, a car or a motorbike, and that car will come on demand and deliver a package a package for you. So that's the the delivery space. We we've adjusted our products to. Um, to be to be more uh, tailored to the market so we launched uber by the hour and, and this is specifically for the use case where if you want to go out to shop and you don't want to take two ubers an uber there and an uber back or you, you need an uber for the whole day you can you can request a car and this uh, and this driver and vehicle will stay with you the other very big one that we that we introduced was was its essentials now when and I talk from the South African context, we went into level five lockdown, and we just we just couldn't move around, and you could hardly go to the grocery store to go and get your groceries. One is lots of restrictions on when you can go, and two, it's not necessarily that safe to to be heading to the to the grocery store. So we launched um, Eats Essentials and transitions transitioned our Eats platform from just hot food from restaurants to allow groceries and convenience goods to be delivered. And, and that was a, a nice way to deliver a product to our customers that we wouldn't have before, but also a way to get drivers moving. So I mentioned at the beginning, um, as the as city shut down, our, our, our drivers just didn't actually have, um, didn't actually have, have, have trips coming their way. So this was another nice way to, to, to bring business to, to, to our driver partners. The, the other thing that was really encouraging when we started was the partnerships that we were able to develop. And we noticed that the world is falling apart and there are certain people that really, really need help. And essential, essential staff came, uh, came to mind first. And these essential staff protect our communities and they, they, they need help. So we, so we launched a, a product called Uber Medic, which was designed for it's designed for transporting transporting medical workers, and we we funded that. We partnered with a number of organisations that that also assisted to fund it. And across the different markets that we operate in, we had something. I'll talk to a specific one was was in Abidjan, in in, in, in Cote d'Ivoire. We partnered with uh, with the Ministry of Health and uh, automobile automobile dealer Susida, and we're able to provide free transportation to health workers in in Abidjan. Um, we did similar things in things in Kenya and South Africa. But one that I'm, I'm particularly proud of is, is the partnership that we have with Bill and Melinda Gates and the Western Cape Department of Health in South Africa. They saw a need where as the supply chain fell apart, there were hundreds of thousands of people that weren't able to get their, their chronic meds because of the supply chain that fell apart. So we, we spun up a, a partnership with them really quickly and started delivering their um, delivering goods uh, at least meds on their on their behalf and we've done um more than half a million pieces of chronic meds we've been able to to deliver with ubers and the beauty there is being able to deliver the products but also create additional additional earnings opportunities for drivers that were probably sitting around with a lot less work because of the because of the pandemic i think another thing that is a is a common theme when we talk about uh, talk about our business is is safety and our commitment to safety remains. And a new safety consideration is obviously hygiene safety and health safety that came as a result of the as a result of the pandemic. And we did the obvious. We we managed to to source um, let's say cloth masks for ex for example for driver partners. We partnered with an organization in South Africa, the Yes Foundation, where they had local seamstresses out of townships that actually made the masks. And it was in the early days where masks weren't that easy to easy to get and we and we managed to partner with them and we we, we issued those masks to, to drivers and P, uh, other ppas PP, ppe sanitizers and wipes we, we managed to issue and that's that's all fine that's very sort of practical things to do but where we were able to leverage our technology
that drivers are following all the all the protocols from a from a health and safety perspective. So when a driver or a rider wants to start a trip, there's a checklist they need to complete. Are you wearing your mask? Are you have you sanitized your hands, et cetera, et cetera. And that's uh, that that's fine. But we 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 created a um, a facial recognition technology or leverage the facial recognition technology that we use for for safety to actually verify if a, if a driver or a rider is wearing a mask before they before they go online or do a trip. And these type of things we're able to able to implement. And I'm really proud of how quickly we managed to pivot and um, and do that. So I think for me, I I'm really excited to be part of um, the sub-Saharan African business we've got seven countries that we operate in and there's a massive opportunity and there's still a lot of opportunity for growth i think we've only tapped tapped a really small portion of our of our potential addressable market and we'll continue to invest in our cities and we'll continue to launch new products and launch new countries and um be 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 really close to our to our cities so that's um that's that's what i wanted to tell you today um it's been a it's been a privilege to be part of part of the talk. So thank you very much.